Hi everybody, welcome to EduTab and today we are going to look at the complete syllabus and the strategy for ESI phase 1. So in your pattern of phase 1 for NABAD grade day examination, there are 8 subjects, alright. The subjects are reasoning, English, computer knowledge, quants, decision making, general awareness, ESI, economic and social issues which we are covering today and agriculture and rural development that is your ARD, okay. Now we know that these 8 subjects are further divided into 2 sections. So organization what they have done, they have divided the eight subject into two section one being the non merit section which consists of five subject and then we have the merit section okay the merit section which have GA ESI and ARD okay non merit section here we just have to clear the sectional cutoff and that's it you need not to score like highest or maximum marks because it is not going to make any difference in your selection but yes you should definitely clear the sectional cutoff but in merit section what happens you have to clear the sectional cutoff but along with that you also have to clear an overall cutoff as well okay so it's very important to focus on each subject and the maximum or the highest that you can score it is going to benefit you and that is why today we are going to look at the ESI section like what is the syllabus what is the uh, division if you see in the mark uh, in the static and the current affair portion that is asked right what sort of questions are asked and ultimately what are the sources that you can refer to right now if you look at the ESI syllabus okay it has uh, the syllabus that you're looking on the screen starting off of what, uh, what is the nature of Indian economy about its stro structure uh, that exists okay about the different economic reforms that happened in India to develop the economy okay of the nation apart from that you should be aware of the you know uh, the definitions as well as the basics of inflation what are the types of infl inflation apart from that poverty elevation there are a lot of uh, uh, schemes and programs that are running for poverty elevation for the employment generation so you should be aware of those programs that are there right you should be aware of the schemes that are there Apart from that, it's very important to know that see, agriculture is a uh, is the part of C ESI syllabus as well. See, usually what the misconception is because in ARD, static holds much of the weightage and current affairs, it uh, it holds very less weightage, only around 8 to 10 percent. So usually the misconception of uh, an aspirant is that they think ARD current affairs, if they skip, it is uh, fine with them. No, that is not the case because ARD it is part of the syllabus of ESI and it has been observed that the current affairs that are related to agriculture be it your government schemes be it other current affairs which I will even show you right those have been asked in ESI so you cannot afford to skip ARD current affairs altogether this is I want to convey apart from that what is the banking structure and financial institution that we have in India what are the different uh, funding institution that exists at the national level international level these are your uh, part of the syllabus and if you look at it the next portion here if I talk about the social structure in India which talks about the demographic trends, urbanization, migration, education, social justice. It has been observed that from these three points more of current affairs are asked not from the static portion right. So if you are thinking that you are going to mug up what is the uh, what is the definition of joint family system or anything like that it is not going to help you. In this section the social structure in India education as well as the social justice these are the topics that are going to help you more in your uh, these are the topics where the current affair you should focus more rather than the static portion however to have the basic understanding like what are these are definitely going to help you understand the current affair in a better manner right and randomly there have been uh, questions seen from Indian political system human development even if you know you keep these topic at low priority uh, it is not going to impact you much I uh, rarely one mark question is asked from here right but this is the syllabus that uh, is given by the numbered organization okay and uh, in the in the notification right and I also want to highlight one thing that uh, they provide syllabus only for phase 2 they do not have any syllabus defined for phase 1 but because ESI it is common for both phase 2 and phase 1 so we keep the same syllabus for phase 1 as well and it has been observed it is on the similar line only okay now once we have seen the syllabus this is something that you can go get in the notification also right so how are we adding value to it we are adding value to it by segregating the portion into how much the questions are asked from static and how much the questions are asked from the current affair perspective okay now if you look for the ESI section the static it holds very less weightage as compared to the current affairs you have in phase one you have 40 questions that are asked in ESI section all right in many shifts it has been observed that 40 on 40 questions are from current affairs only but in some shifts question have been observed in static and all in all on an average if you have to say you can say that out of 40 question around one to 
five can be from your static, and then the rest, which is around thirty-five to forty, will be uh, or thirty-nine approximately, will be from your current affairs section only, right? So this is one division that you have to keep in mind. What do I want to convey from this? I want to convey that for phase one ESI perspective, you have to focus more on current affairs, do as much as ESI current affair as possible, because it holds more weightage and not the static portion for phase one ESI section. Okay. Now, uh, but still, as I said, that you know, one to five questions are still there. That is asked from static. So, for what? What can be done, right? So here there are some important chapters. It has been observed that if you do these chapters, previously the questions have been around these lines only, and even if you read these chapters, it will develop the basics of economy for you, and it will even help you to understand the current affairs in better manner, right? So what are the chapters? So if you complete inflation, balance of payment, monetary policy, fiscal policy, growth and development, and the banking institution at national and international. Level, these chapters. If you complete for phase one of ESI, please keep in mind this whole video. It is regarding phase one ESI because phase two is something that comes afterwards, right? So it's very important to look at phase one first, where these chapters are the most important ones. Because previously, if you analyze the previous year question paper, you would see the questions are on these lines only, right? Now let's talk about what are the different sort of questions that are asked in current affairs. So let's have an idea, okay? So see your current. current affairs can be further divided into government schemes reports and indices and current affairs now what is current affair under current affair see some of the points cannot be some of the questions cannot be kept under government schemes or reports and indices that is why they have been kept in the separate section when i'll show you the explanation you will have more idea when i'll show you the examples i would say you would have more idea we'll start off with reports okay so if you are covering reports first of all you need to keep in mind that what sorts of report you have to cover always go for such reports first of all which caters to your syllabus you have the syllabus uh, i have already provided that in the presentation right always follow the syllabus and whatever be the report that has been published regarding the syllabus by any national or international governmental bodies those are asked in the examination what does it mean for example at national level if niti aayog has come up with any report which is catering to the syllabus or any ministry or at international level for example imf has come up with any report world trade organization world health organization other such organization has come up with any report that is asked in the examination any report that is no matter how authentic how acceptable that is but the report has been published by any private entity or private body or any ngo that is not asked in examination this you have to keep in mind okay no matter how authentic that is only the ones that are published by the governmental bodies and that is catering to the syllabus okay now what are the things that you need to cover in a report first of all released by which organization what were the major findings of it if there was a head of the committee so who was the head and what is the ranking of india and who are the top rankers in that particular if that particular report provides with any ranking and definitely if ranking has been made so there must be some parameters on which ranking is being done right so those parameters what are those parameters sometimes that can be asked in the examination right for example you have first question according to economic survey the agriculture and allied activities see this question came in esi section as i told you before agriculture is part of esi that is why it has been observed that the questions are asked from there theek hai to ye cheez aapko yaad rakhni hai you cannot afford to skip the agriculture current affairs then financial stability report it was released by which of the following organization it's been mentioned here and then this question let's understand how this was framed global food security index mein india ki ranking puchi gayi thi that what is the ranking of india okay now you need to understand providing food security to all the citizens of the nation is it a social issue yes it is a social issue that we have to take care of that all the citizens of india they get the food and because this particular report was published uh, global food security index was published and uh, the, that is why the question was asked in the examination and what was asked the ranking of india as i told you before who are the top rankers and what is the ranking of india it is very very important right now let's come to government schemes when we come to when we say about the nabard examination government schemes are very important like if 40 on 40 if i give you an idea if 40 on 40 questions are asked on current affairs around half will be from your government schemes only so you do understand what is the important of government schemes right now what to cover like what to cover in that and which ministries to cover now that's very tedious first of all let's try to understand like what are the ministries that can be associated with the esi syllabus first of all we are talking about economy so ministry of finance right then uh, apart from that ministry of msme ministry of skill development that is catering to the development right and uh, 
helping the economy grow right apart from that when we talk about social issues so uh, gender equality is a social issue so ministry of women and child development apart from that uh, providing good ed education to all is a social issue so ministry of education apart from that providing good health so ministry of health and families welfare ministry of agriculture is a very important uh, ministry then apart from that providing basic amenities so ministry of uh, uh, your home affairs okay urban affairs so uh, if i have to count i can count many and in a way if i give you a new perspective don't you think that any scheme that has been published it is to cater one or another social issue only right so instead of going ministry wise because see sometime in a ministry if there are hundreds of schemes or maybe chalo for basic example even if there are 50 schemes okay uh, but some of the schemes they are not been in news for 2 to 3 years they are not asked in examination so it would be like wasting your time so better than that from the previous year analysis it has been observed that any scheme that has been new in the 6 months time period just cover those and uh, that caters to the syllabus okay that will uh, be more fruitful strategy for you instead of going ministry wise okay and what are the topics that you need to cover the it belongs to which ministry what is the launcher of the scheme what is the funding pattern and budget allocation provided for the scheme what are the objectives who are the target beneficiaries if it is a state scheme so just to know to which state does it belong to it's enough you need not to uh, memorize the content under it and what are the current development if any new development has happened under it that can be asked a uh, what sort of question for example samagra shiksha theek hai shiksha ministry of education its launch year was asked then beti bachao beti padhao ministry of women and child development its vision was asked its objective was asked theek hai pradhan mantri jeevan jyoti bima yojana so this particular scheme belongs to ministry of finance it's a social security scheme and in that particular year when this particular scheme was asked in 2022 cycle there it was observed that the there was a current development that has happened. the premium of the scheme from 330 it was increased to 436 and because it was near the time period of the when the examination was conducted hence it was asked in the news theek okay? hai so these are just to give you an idea what sort of questions are asked apart from that sometimes some ESI news are there for example dekho government is doing a lot uh, for MSME to develop and for them they are providing a lot of leverages right so that the retailers and wholesalers can get the benefit they were also included as M in under msme and hence there was a news regarding it and you had to solve financial commission cup finance commission kab se commence hui thi puch liya gaya tha union budget mein development financial institution mein kitne pillars the theek hai uske regarding question puch liya gaya tha theek hai now we have understood the syllabus we have seen the importance of static and current affairs we have seen what sort sort of questions are asked what are the most important static topics right now let's come to from where to do right talking about the static portion see you can go for indian economy by ramesh singh but i would say stick to the syllabus do not study in depth okay because in examination it does not it's not asked in depth a very detailed form right talking about social issues i personally will, personally would say if you're thorough with current affairs you will be able to understand like what are the social problems we are currently facing and what the government is doing to uh, to resolve the issues right but if you still want to have the basic static idea in that case you can refer to the problem uh, social problems in in india by ramahoja talking about esi current affairs so you can refer to vikaspedia for the uh, government schemes okay then you can refer to pi IB Economic Times, the Hindu, for covering the ESI current affairs portion. Right. So that is all in this video. If you want me to cover any certain topic, uh, strategy-wise for NBAR grade examination, do let me know. I'll make a video on that. And uh, please join our uh, YouTube channel. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel for more such videos. And you can join our Telegram channel to get the PDF of all the lectures that we provide here on YouTube. Thank you, everybody, for watching the session. And all the very best for your exam. Thank you.